fix our minds, our thoughts on you. God, this is all about you, Jesus. And we worship you with everything that we have. God, we surrender it all to you. God, you are so good. I count on one thing. The same God has never failed will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the way same God is never late, is working all things out, working all things out. Oh yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name.
Hey everyone, we did want to take a moment just to say welcome to Church at Home. Uh, we're so glad that you've taken time to join us today, and um, it's really our hope and prayer that it's a highlight of your week. And uh, we did want to say a special welcome to you. If you're joining us for the very first time, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. And we'd love to get to know you just a little bit more. And uh, the easiest way for us to do that is through what we call a connection card. And you'll actually see a link for that in the top right-hand corner of the screen. You can go ahead and click on that. Uh, if you're joining us on demand later in the day, you can find that at queencitypeople.com slash connection card. Um, it'll take you just a few moments to fill out. We'd love for you to take some time to do that. Uh, it's a safe card to fill out. All we're going to do is just send you an email with some information about our church. We'd love to connect with you in that way. Uh, also want to make sure that you know a couple of things that are coming up. So today is actually step two of what we call the growth track. And so the growth track is just a simple and easy way for you to connect to our church and just to get to know a little bit more um, about Queen City Church, about our story. Also, it is a way for you to get to know just a little bit more about yourself and how God designed you, his purpose for your life, and how you can use that uh, to serve other people. And so today is actually step two of the growth track, and you're welcome to join us. You don't have to have attended it in the past. You can jump in at any time. So you can actually do that today. It's going to be at 12 o'clock. And uh, you can sign up for that and get more information at queencitypeople.com slash growth track. Uh, the last thing is this. We want to make sure that you know that this Friday night uh, is going to be a special uh, event called XO Marriage Night. And so it's this Friday night, August 21st. There's actually going to be two sessions that we have available, one at 630 and then one at 830. You can join for one or both of those, whatever works for you. Um, and this is for anybody who is married, uh, who's engaged to be married, or anybody who is proactively planning for marriage. And it's just an opportunity for you to hear some incredible communicators um, share some specific content about marriage. So those communicators, Mike Todd from Transformation Church, Jimmy Evans from Gateway Church, um, it's going to be absolutely amazing, and we'd love for you to join us for that. Uh, so again, you can get more information, and the live stream will be available at queencitypeople.com slash XO. Last thing is this, we're going to throw 60 seconds on the clock, and we'd love for you just to take some time to connect. Uh, so if you're at a watch party, make sure you say hey to some people that are at that watch party. Uh, you can send a text to a family member or friend and just let them know that you're thinking about them. Um, or if you're joining us live, make sure to hop in the chat and say hey there as well, and then we'll get right into the message. Welcome to Church at Home. You need to know that we are so genuinely excited that you're hanging out with us today. Whether you are with us for the very first time or you're with us week in and week out, you need to know that we are very honored that you're with us today. In fact, I got some people with me right here in the room. Can we clap our hands and just welcome everybody that's joining us? We're grateful. 
So before we jump into today's message, there are a couple updates that I want to make sure that you are aware of. First, today, we are ending this service by taking communion together. So if you don't have some things around you, maybe make sure you take some time to go hit pause and go get whatever you need to make sure that we take communion together. We'll do that right at the very end, right before everything's over. So we'll be taking communion today. I'm excited about that. And then also, um, this back to school season, season, we have three awesome opportunities as a church to be generous with Withrow High School. In fact, earlier this week, our leadership team talked to the principals there and just asked, what are some tangible needs that you guys have? And we right now have three amazing opportunities to be generous as a church. And the first is that we have committed to giving face shields for all the teachers and the faculty and the staff at Withrow. So we're excited about that. And then second, uh, we are, we've committed to giving uh, like masks for all the students, but they're not gonna be just, just, just normal masks. We're gonna get Withrow branded cool mask for every single student, 1,500 masks that we're gonna get for the students. So we're really excited about that. And then also our church has committed to giving a minimum of 100 backpacks uh, two students. And so I want you to know that this is a part, this is a generosity opportunity for all of us. And so specifically, uh, all three can be given just by giving uh, financially to our church. And so if you want to give financially to those three things, they're going to put up on the screen right now just all the different ways that you can give, uh, that you can give online, you can give through text, or you can give through our app. But the only one that you can maybe go out and do is the backpack um, if you want to go grab a backpack. Now, I will say that this is a backpack for middle school and high school students, so please do not, do not get like a My Little Pony or a Paw Patrol <laughs> backpack. That just would not be uh, good for those students. And so, but if you want to get a backpack this week, uh, you could do that, and you can actually drop it off at one specific time. That'll be on Thursday, August 20th from this, that's this Thursday. So you gotta do it by this Thursday from five to 6 p.m. And uh, you can do that at Withrow High School at the, at the gymnasium entrance by the football field. And you know, here's the deal. From day one of our church, we have made a decision that we wanna be a blessing to Withrow and uh, that, that we want to, that our presence being there should make that school better and brighter. And so we're so excited to be able to have these generosity opportunities. And I just wanna encourage you to pray this week about how you can be involved with your generosity and just take some time this week to go and to pray and to be able to give generously towards these things. And I want you to know, and I say this every week, that this is only possible because of your generosity. Here's the thing. We're doing those things whether you give or not because the truth is uh, you've been so generous already so that we can jump on opportunities like this. And so I thank you for your faithful, consistent generosity and know it is making a difference. Okay, so turn your Bibles to uh, John chapter 19. John chapter 19 is where we're going to hang out today. And we're in week three of a series that we're calling Run It Back. And in this series, we're looking at some of the messages and the series from our first hundred weeks as a church. And really, this series is all about just reminders, important reminders that we need to be having, especially right now. And but like this idea of reminding, it's not new. This has been happening since the early church. In fact, Peter, he says this in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. He says, therefore, I will always remind you about these things, even though you already know them and are standing firm in the truth you have been taught, and it is only right that I should keep on reminding you, that I keep on running this back as long as I live. And so today, we're gonna go all the way back to week 30 of our church in our How to Live Through a Bad Day series. Now, 
Uh, man, I cannot think of a better series that right now in everything that we're doing that we need to revisit as a church, how to live through a bad day. And just by show of hands online and also here in the room, how many of you have ever had a bad day? Anybody ever had a bad day? How many of you have ever had a bad year? I mean, just, man, yeah. How many of you are over 2020 right now? Like, I'm just, I'm over it. I'm over it. And uh, I've actually seen online that 2020 is becoming an adjective, <laughs> that this year is actually becoming like a description of things being bad. It's like, oh, that is so 2020. It's like when, <laughs> when everything in life is a dumpster fire and everything is just awful, you just say, that is so 2020. And here's the truth, 2020, this year has taught us that bad days are coming. Right. And maybe you hear that and you're like... Man, I came to church to be encouraged. Could you be more positive? Okay, I'm positive that you will have bad days. We will all have bad days. So the question is, how do we get through them? And our theme verse for this series was Hebrews chapter 12, verse verse 2, where it says, you want to know how to get through bad days? Keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished this race that we're in. And then it says this, study how he did it. Study how he did life because he never lost sight of where he was headed. That exhilarating finish in and with God, he could put up with anything along the way. How many of you want to have a life like that? Yeah. that just, I can put up with anything. Throw, do your best. I can put up, with, including my bad days. And it says, cross, shame, whatever. And in this series, we looked at Jesus' worst day. It was the day that he died on the cross. And historically, we call that day Good Friday. But the truth is, it was only good for us. That it was a really hard, bad day for Jesus. And the Bible and the four Gospels, it records seven statements that Jesus said on the cross. And all of them have an important lesson for our lives. And so today, we're going to go back and look at the sixth statement that Jesus said on the cross in John chapter 19, in verse 28. We'll start in verse 28. It says this, Jesus knew that his mission was now finished. And to fulfill scripture, he said, I am thirsty. And a jar of sour wine was sitting there. So they soaked a sponge in it, put it on a hyssop branch and held it up to his lips. And when Jesus had tasted it, he said, and here's the phrase we're gonna study today, it is finished. And Jesus, he says this famous statement that in English is three words, but in the original Greek, it's one word. It's this word, tetelestai. And here's what it means. I'll put the definition on the screen. It means it is finished, it stands finished, and it will always be finished. I love that. That that's what this word means. It is finished, it stands finished, and it will always be finished. Finished. Now, this word was commonly used in everyday life during the time that this was written. So in, in, the, in these times of the Bible that this was written, this was a common term that people would have heard a lot over time. But my favorite use of this word, hands down, is this, that it was a financial term commonly used by bankers when the final payment had been paid on a debt. So I want you to imagine, maybe some of you have experienced this, that you've had big, like maybe student loans, or maybe you've had big credit card debt, or, or for whatever reason, there was just, there was something that you had just this massive debt on, and you're working, and you're paying it off, and you go in, and you log in, and online, you make your, fame, your, your last payment, and you hit send, or maybe you, you write the last check and you put it in the mail. Or maybe you just want to make a statement. So you go to the bank and you slap that money on the, on the counter and you say, it is finished to Telestai. That is what this word means. And I love that. And in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the Bible says, for the wages. So in other words, the price, the cost, the debt of sin is death. So that's what you owe. In other words, that the debt that we owe from our sin is death. So when Jesus died on the cross and he said, to die, that one word, it meant, he said 
with authority, that your debt has been paid in full, your balance is zero, you don't owe anything anymore, it is finished. I love that word. And uh, Dr. Jack Hayford, he says that the most significant word in the New Testament translates to the most triumphant declaration. And so now, a lot of people think that this is his final statement on the cross, that this was the last thing he said, but it wasn't. And I think that's the point because he makes this statement, it is finished even though it wasn't finished. He makes his statement while he was still in the middle of his bad day. When it was still going on, he makes this statement. He says, I know I'm still in pain. I know that I'm going through some hard things. I know I'm hurting, but I also know that it is finished. And Jesus, in this powerful statement, is teaching us that when you go through a bad day, write this down, this is what we're talking about, the principle in this One word is that when you're having a bad day, be assured that there is a purpose and an end. When you're going through a bad day, be assured that there is a purpose and an end. Be assured that there is a purpose. Listen, God never wastes anything, including your bad days. You need to hear this, that there's purpose in your pain. There is. God, be assured that there is a purpose and be assured that there is an end. And I've been saying this for the last 23 weeks, since March 8th, last time we got to hang out together. I've been saying for the last 23 weeks that this thing, that it does have an end, that this, this coronavirus season, this pandemic, it has been hard. Like we've all been affected by this. Every single one of us have had some bad days over the last 23 weeks. Nobody has been exempt from this. It's affected us all. But listen, it won't last forever. It won't. It has an expiration date that this season will end because it is a season. In all seasons, good and bad end. Come on, can I get a good amen, Bengals fans? I mean, think about this. Last year, in 2019... They finished with a 2-14 and 14 record, the worst in the league. They got the number one draft pick because of it. They finished 2-14, and 14. but in less than a month, hopefully, hopefully, and they start a new season, guess what? It doesn't matter what their record was last year. They're going to start this year 0-0. Because that season doesn't carry over. That season didn't last forever, and this one won't either. And when we forget that, we will lose hope. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, no hope, it's a dangerous thing. In Proverbs 13, it says, hope deferred, it makes the heart sick. So no hope equals a sick heart. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure that we know that, man, that this bad day, be assured that there is a purpose and an end. And so here's the word out of that statement that I couldn't shake this week. It's that word assured. Like I couldn't shake it. And so here's my burden today. Here's what I've been praying, is that you could leave this church at home experience saying this, that even when I don't have all the answers, I can still have assurance. That even when I, maybe I can't have all my questions answered, but I can walk away today with some assurance. But here's the question, what, what can we have assurance in on our bad days? Because we've learned over the last six months that there's a lot of things that we can't have assurance in because it's been taken all away. And so I'm here to just encourage you today that you can have assurance in God, that you can. You can have, when everything else, it seems like you can't have assurance in, you can have assurance in God and specifically in three things. Here's number one. You can have assurance that God is all-powerful. That God is all-powerful. The theological word that you can see right there is omnipotent. And all that means is that God is all-powerful. We're talking about the God who spoke and galaxies appeared. If you've ever seen a night sky full of stars, he spoke and that, and that existed. We're talking about the same God that just by his words that when he spoke, mountain ranges appeared. 
and beautiful oceans and beaches appeared. And I'm telling you that when he speaks, there's so much power in that. And that God is full. He's, he's all powerful. And some of you are thinking that's the problem. Because if he's got all this power, why am I experiencing this bad day? Why doesn't he do something about what I'm experiencing? Why, why doesn't he take this all away? Why doesn't he cure it today? Why, like why, why does he do that? And the truth is, I don't know. I don't. I'm not going to pretend that I have all the answers because I don't. I don't know. Uh, there's a lot that I don't understand. But here's what I do know. In Colossians chapter 1, in verse 16 and 17, it says, For everything, absolutely everything, above and below, visible and invisible, rank after rank after rank of angels, everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. He was there before any of it came into existence, and he holds it all together. He's got the whole world in his hands right up to this moment. Listen, he's holding it together more than you realize. Right now, he's holding it together more than you and I realize. And when I doubt his power, and I want to encourage you to do this. If you've ever doubted his power, here's what I do. I look back at my life, and I want to see his fingerprints all over my life. When I doubt his power, I look back and see all that God has done in my life. And I'm telling you, I see his fingerprints everywhere because I was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind at one point in my life, but now I can see. And even bigger than that, I was dead, but now I'm alive. See, I grew up in the middle of nowhere, backwoods of middle Tennessee, and I grew up in the middle of 22,000 acres of state-owned land. My family didn't own it, but the state of Tennessee owned it, and my dad's job came with a house that was in the middle of that 22,000 acres, three-mile gravel road existed just to get to my house, and that's where I grew up, and I, I'm telling you, I, I, am, I, am, I am so shocked at what God has done in my life. I was a quiet kid. I was petrified to talk, um, not because I was shy, but because I had a stuttering problem. And I was so worried about getting in a situation where I would stutter and then people would make fun of me. And I was so scared to talk and think about what I do for a living now. <laughs> See, nobody would have picked me to do this. Nobody, and I'm telling you, nobody is more surprised than me at what's happening right now in my life. So even on my bad days, I choose to believe the words of Jesus in John chapter nine, verse three, where he says, this happened, this bad day happened, so the power of God can be seen in him. And maybe you're joining us today, and you're just thinking, man, that is so crazy, how can you think that way? That's, that doesn't even make sense. That's illogical. With everything happening in the world right now, how can you have that type of blind faith and like this blind trust in God? And my question to you would be, what's the better option, trusting in me? Yeah. Here's the truth. I'd rather have hope in an all-powerful God than certainty in a very limited me. And so we can have assurance today that God is all powerful. We can also have assurance in this number two, that God is all knowing. That God is all knowing. And the theological word for that is omniscient. Listen, he's not surprised by anything. And the Bible it says in Isaiah chapter 46 that God, get this, that he knows the beginning from the end. That's what God, God knows the beginning from the end. But here's the problem. We're in the middle. And we can't always see the end. And so we can't see it. But in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13, it says, he knows about everyone, everywhere, 
Everything about us is bare and wide open to the all-seeing eyes of our living God. Nothing can be hidden from him. But there's going to be times, and I just, I love you enough to tell you the truth, that there's going to be times for all of us, including me, there's going to be times where we don't fully understand where we're going to be going through, there's going to be a moment in life. If you haven't had it, get ready. It's coming. There's going to be times where we don't fully understand, where we don't fully get it. And we ask questions like, why is this happening? Like, why? Why? I, I don't get it. Why is this coronavirus thing happening? Why? Like, what's going to happen in the future? Why, why does God heal some, but he doesn't heal all? Why, why does God answer that prayer, but he doesn't answer the prayer that I'm praying. And there's going to be times where we don't fully understand. But in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 and 9, I think it tells us why. Because it says, God is talking. He says, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And you may read those two scriptures and be so discouraged right now. But the truth is, like when I see that, I'm not discouraged. I'm encouraged. Like get encouraged. Like I'm glad that God's ways and God's thoughts are higher than my ways and my thoughts. In fact, it brings me so much comfort. In my opinion, it's a very good thing. Because if you and I could really fully understand everything about God, would you want to serve him, worship him, follow him anyway? I mean, think about it. If all of God could fit into my Middle Tennessee public school education brain, like, would he really be that big of a God? Because here's the truth. We didn't come in first in any list. And so in, in Middle Tennessee, there's no way. And so, so if all of God could fit into everything here, like he wouldn't be that big of a God. And it's, it's like, it's, I think of it this way. It's like a piece of art fully understanding the artist. It just, it just would be so hard to do that. And the reality is that there's going to be some things this side of heaven that we won't ever understand. But let me encourage you with this. Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to an all-knowing God. So Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to an all-knowing God. And so what can we have assurance in today? We can have assurance that God is all-powerful, that God is all-knowing. And then number three, that God is ever-present. The theological word there is omnipresent. That God is ever present. And by the way, this one's my favorite. I love this one. It's the fact that God is always there. That there's nowhere that we can go where he's not there. There's nothing that we can experience in life where he doesn't see it, know it, and is there. That God is always there. And the truth is, if you study this from, from front to back, you will find so many just reminders of that. You'll see scripture after scripture. And I wanted, to share, I wanted to share 30 of them with you, but I had to narrow it down to five. <laughs> and so let me, let me share these five with you. In Psalm 46, verse one, it says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Psalm 139, uh, verse seven through 10, it says, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you're there. If I go down to the grave, you're there too. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell in the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. In Psalm 34, verse 18, and I think somebody needs to hear this today. I really do. That the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. And maybe you're joining us for church at home and you have a broken heart right now. The truth of this scripture, it says that the Lord is close to you right now. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. Isaiah chapter 43, verses two and five, it says, when you go through deep waters, when you go through something hard, I will be with you. 
When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. And before Jesus, the last one, before Jesus drops the mic and ascends to heaven, he says this in Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. See, I've been following Jesus uh, since June 25th, 1999, a little over 21 years. And since I made that decision, I've had some bad days. And on my bad days, here's what I can genuinely, without any hype, without making anything up, I can look at you with full integrity and say that over the last 21 days, on my bad days, I've experienced peace that passes all my understanding. I've experienced peace that the Bible says can only come from God. That doesn't even make sense. I've experienced that type of peace on bad days. I've experienced joy that can only come from God that gives me strength no matter what I'm going through. I've experienced comfort when I don't have all the answers. And here's why I've experienced that, because I know that God is with me. There hasn't been a day that I've experienced where he's not there. And here's the truth. When I know that God is with me, I can face anything against me. When I know that God is with me, I can face anything against me. Now, I may not, uh, I may not always understand. I may not have all the answers, but I can have assurance that God, that he's all-powerful, that God is all-knowing, and that God is ever-present. Now, I, I grew up in a church where we sang hymns, old school church. How many of you grew up in a church where, where you sang some hymns? Okay. And I grew up in a church where a guy would stand up at the front and he would tell you to get out the, the, the hymnal from the, from the pew that was right in front of you, this little compartment that had all the books. You'd pick out the book and he'd say, turn in your hymnal to number 547. <laughs> Five, four. Seven. We'd sing the song and then we'd awkwardly stop and do another song. And uh, it's kind of how worship was. And, um, but I remember as a kid going through the, this hymnal and I'd see all these old songs and it was like before Hillsong, before Elevation. It was like, you just see all these, all these names of all these people. And I kept seeing this name over and over again. And it was this name, Fanny J. Crosby. So I studied a little bit about this, this woman, Miss Fanny J. And in her 95 years on planet Earth, get this, she wrote over 8,000 hymns. 8,000 hymns. She wrote her first one at six years old. I've got a six year old. He is not <laughs> writing hymns. Um, but what most people don't know about this amazing woman is that she tragically lost her sight at six weeks old from a medical accident and she was blind her entire life. Her whole life, 95 years, she couldn't see. And not only that, she tragically lost her dad due to illness before she turned one years old. So she never knew her father. So from birth, she had to live through bad days. But it's amazing how somebody blind could see so clearly. Now, one of her most well-known songs is this song that I grew up singing in church called Blessed Assurance. And listen, listen to these lyrics written by this lady. Went through all those hard things. She says, Blessed Assurance Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. You may think that my story was being blind. You may think that my story was growing up without a father. You may think that my story was my bad day. No, this is my story. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. This is my story. This is my song. 
praising my Savior all the day long. And just in case you didn't get it the first time, this is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Now this song and her story, it shouts this truth that my bad days are not my story. That my bad season is not my story. That 2020 is not our story. I may not have all the answers, but I know that I have some assurance. I know that God will bring me through this. I know that God is all powerful. I know that God is all knowing and that his thoughts and his ways are higher than my thoughts and my ways. I know that God is ever present, that he's always there for me, that I'm never alone. I know that my bad days have a purpose that there's purpose to my pain. And I know that my bad days have an end. This won't last forever. So on your bad days, rest assured, have assurance that there is a purpose and an end. It is finished. So I want you to bow your head and close your eyes and I know that we do this a lot as a church, but I think it's so important. So before we take communion together, I want you to just create some space wherever you're at and just ask God, God, what are you speaking to me? What are you saying to me today? Maybe ask him this, God, what does my response need to be today? How can I just not go through the motions and play church? How can my life look different? The truth is maybe you're watching and you're far from God. You don't have a personal relationship with God. You may hear things like God is always there, but he feels so far away right now. And I want you to know that you are one sincere, heartfelt prayer away from everything changing. And the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, that he will save you. Now, here's what I'm not asking you to do. I'm not asking you to join this church. I'm asking if you wanna give your life to Jesus today, if you want to start or maybe restart a relationship with him, to give him your life. So today, if that's the decision and you know that that's what God is asking you to do and you wanna make the decision to follow Jesus, just pray this right where you're at. Just pray this. Just say, Jesus, I need you. I'm sorry that I've lived my life without you. Will you come live inside me? Will you do what I can't do? And will you change me? Will you make me brand new? I surrender my whole life to you. And today, I want to make the choice to follow you with my whole heart. We thank you today for Jesus. We thank you for the cross. We thank you that it is finished. In Jesus' name, we pray. And everybody said, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, you need to know that we are so proud of you. And then also, here's, here's the biggest thing. As a church, we would love to know that you made that decision so that we can help you with some next steps. So the best way for you to communicate that to us is to fill out our connection card. And you can find that at queencitypeople.com slash connection card. And it's a very safe card to fill out. You can do that. We're not gonna, we just wanna send you some information through email that give you some next steps. If you're watching right now live, you can find it at the very top of the page right there. Go ahead and click that and fill that out. We would love to know that you made that decision. Now in just a moment, um, And I'm even thinking about this. I'm thinking about the people that just made that decision. And that right after you made that decision, the very first thing that you can do is that you can celebrate what we call communion. And in just a moment, we're gonna take that. So if you wanna get everything ready for that. And the Bible says that we take communion to just simply remember Jesus. And so before I lead you in that, here's what I want you to do in here and wherever you're watching from, I wanna ask that you just close your eyes. Just kind of remove all distractions. And just right now, right where you're at, you just focus on Jesus. You just focus on Jesus. You think about what he's done for you. Think about the cross. 
Think about the fact that he took the bill, that your debt is paid. And let's just focus on Jesus. Let's not rush this, let's not go too fast. And right now, as we focus on Jesus, come on, let's sing this as we prepare our hearts to take communion. store and I bought something and the person that was checking me out asked me would you like a receipt normally confession I don't get them most of the time I'm like no I'm good for some reason it's feeling spicy (laughs) so I got my receipt I said yeah sure I'll take that receipt you worked hard to ask me if I wanted it yeah I'll take it sure why not and I was thinking about that this week and this normal piece of paper that doesn't have any value, this, this just a normal piece of paper, this receipt, it represent that what I got was paid for. And communion, this normal piece of bread, maybe you're at your home, you have a cracker, and just maybe juice or water, Maybe you're using your coffee this morning for the cup. This normal piece of bread, this normal juice. You know what this is? This is a receipt. This is a receipt representing that because of the finished work of Jesus on the cross, that our debt has been paid, that our balance is now zero, that we don't owe anything anymore. You see, this normal piece of bread and this juice is a receipt showing that it is finished. And the night before his worst day, the Bible says that Jesus got together with some of his closest disciples and he led them through what we now call communion. 
Maybe you grew up and it was called the Lord's Supper. And the bread, he took out the bread and he said, this represents my body that was broken for you and I. And so right where you're at, let's take the bread. And then he got the cup. He said, this cup represents my blood that is poured out for you and I. And so let's, let's take the cup. I don't know about you, but I'm so thankful for Jesus. I'm so thankful for what Jesus has done for me. And so let's do this. Let's pray. And let's just, why don't right now, why don't just right now, just bow your head and close your eyes. I want just in your own words, right where you're at, whether you're at a watch party, whether you're watching by yourself, why don't you just with your own words, be able just to thank Jesus. Begin to thank him for what he's done in your life. Begin to thank him for all that he has done, that he is doing, that he's gonna do. And so, Jesus, we are so grateful today. We're so thankful for who you are. We're so thankful for what you've done. We are so thankful for the finished work of the cross. We're so thankful that our debt has been paid. We are so grateful today that our balance is zero, that we don't owe anything anymore. We are so thankful that it is finished. And so, God, I pray that my life, that Everybody that's watching right now, God, that our lives will be a response this week to what you have already done for us. God, I pray that all week long that we will be living in response to what you've already done for us. You gave your all for us. So God, this week we give our all to you. And we thank you so much for Jesus. And it's through the mighty, powerful, awesome name of Jesus that we pray. And everybody said, amen. Again, I do want to thank you for joining us for Church at Home. And I always want you to know that I love you uh, more than you know, that I'm praying for you a lot. I try to pray for you every single day and that I miss you. And I cannot wait to see you. And we're getting closer every single day. And I will keep saying this. We will get through this and we will get through this together. Have a great week.